Okay guys, welcome to our Monday night shiur. Before we start, Parashat Re'eh, C. Our shiur is sponsored La Tzlacha, of Neria Shalom Ben Le'ah, where you find his zihu, Rabbi Karo, near Bait Ne'eman Israel. We welcome a, a guest from Florida over here. Welcome, Joshua. They have a lot of hatzlacha, bracha. So, this week's parasha starts a very cryptic message. It says, Re'eh, see. Now, if I want to give you a message, I'm not going to tell you see or listen. Listen. Shema Israel, listen Israel. What does that mean? See. Re'eh. What does he say? Re'eh, anochi noten lifnechem ayom. Bracha uklala. Could you see a blessing or a curse? Is it possible for you to see a blessing or a curse? You can't see a blessing or a you curse. Some people a blessing is something else. Some people that could be a curse. You know, every, everyone else, it's relatively speaking. For some for some person to be rich is a blessing. For another person, richness could be the, the, his demise. For another person, a beautiful life could be his uh, golden life. For another person, that could be his uh, yeah, the biggest uh, nemesis. And uh, think Dave is gonna she's gonna make him. Uh, there's a famous story in the Gemara. We're already speaking about it. Small story. There was a rabbi in the Gemara called Rav Mani. Mani? Not money. Oh. Rav Mani. <laughs> so he had a rabbi called Rav Eliashev. Not like the one that lived in Israel not too long. I'm talking about time in the Gemara. So his Rebbe was called Eliashiv. Eliashiv used to be a first name, not a last name. Eliashiv means God should bring back. We had a Kohen Gadol during the second temple in the beginning called Eliashiv. A Kohen Eliashiv. So he said to his uh, Rebbe, he said, Rebbe, my wife, I can't look at her. She's so unsightly. I cannot, I, I can't come home, I just, I, I mean, even a Rav needs to, uh, you know, he needs to feel some attraction. So, Rav Eliashev says to him, to Rav Mani, he said to him, Titiafi Chana, may Chana become beautiful. Because he said Titiafi Chana is going to be beautiful. Rosti Gav, as we say in Bukhari, he came home and suddenly, wow, sparks were flying, she became like, I don't know what she did or how it happened. She suddenly changed, like Vashti changed, or I don't know what happened, but she became suddenly very beautiful. She put on makeup. She put on makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Two months later, he comes back to his Rebbe. He says, Rebbe, ever since you gave her the bracha, now she makes my life miserable. Get me this, give me that. She doesn't count me. Lo sofer tot, if you say in Hebrew. Now suddenly she became all high end. She's lots of. So the Rebbe said, you gotta be careful what you wish for in life. If a Kadosh Baruch Hu gave you something, it means that's what you have to deal with. Who said for you it's a blessing? Who said for you it's a blessing? So he said, Chana tachzor l'shachri ruta. May Chana go back to the shachri ruta. And she, I don't know what happened over there, some kind of metamorphosis. And she came back to her, she didn't, uh, she came back to the way she was. You have to understand, Re'eh anochi nosel lachem barchal klala. It's all relatively speaking. Except for one thing, Gabriel. There's one thing that's always a bracha, and there's always one thing that's a klala in life. There's always one thing, it's the status quo. What's the bracha? Im If you listen to the mitzvot Hashem, to do what? To learn Torah. To learn Torah. It's such a shame that in our life, Torah has become something so, so mundane. Yeah. And you know who we learned it from? We learned it from the Hellenizers, from the Tzdukim, from the Reform, from the Baitosim. The Torah became another subject. It became a subject. I know I hate it so much when people say, oh, Jewish people are so smart. They won 25% of Nobel uh, Prize. It gets me. What is it? Torah is a subject? What? Because we learn Torah, suddenly we have to win Nobel Prize. The Torah is our life. And when you learn Torah, you're not supposed to be ashamed you're learning Torah. Where are you going tonight? All your friends are going out to have fun. I'm going, I'm going to the shiur. Ah, you're going to go shiur tomorrow. What do you mean go shiur tomorrow? I remember when I was learning, when I used to learn in Williamsburg. 
So we used to have a shiur kavua. Shiur kavua means every single Monday and Thursdays. I think it was Mondays. I had a rebbe over there. He used to teach us shara kavanot of the Ariya Kadosh. Every Monday. Zohar and shara kavanot. We used to learn. So one Monday, I had my wife's uh, 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 cousin was getting engaged. So I told my wife, listen, I have a shiur. I can't make it to the engagement. What do you mean? You're going to make me go alone? I said, ah, let's go. We're going to go. We're going to go. I didn't make it to the shiur. The Rebbe calls me. He says, how could you miss a shiur kavu? I said, I, had to. I felt so stupid saying it. I said, I had to go to somebody's engagement party. That's why I missed the trip. When you see it in the beginning, it doesn't, look, it doesn't look idiotic. But when you think about it in retrospect, I miss the Re Elohim Chaim. I miss the Torah. Just, you got to teach your wife the value of the Torah. Instead of sitting on the Shabbat table and talking how many things she has, how many, you know, when you get to that age, and suddenly all the talk inside your house is going to be about a house. How much this house costs, how much this mortgage is, how much that mortgage is, how much this costs. And if you're going to see what's going on in Shammai when you talk about it, you're going to say, how come I'm wasting my time? Re'e Hashem says. It's so obvious. See, that's the bracha. And when you leave HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's a klala. Why to leave me, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says. And I will illustrate this with the first halakha in the Shulchan Aruch. First halakha. The Shulchan Aruch says, you know, Rabbi Eliyahu Lopiani was a very big Talmud Chacham. He was, uh, he was the uh, Mashgiach of Kvar Chassidim. Very big Talmud Chacham he was, of Eliyahu Lopiani. Make some room for you guys. Make some room. So Rabbi Eliyahu Lopiani says, in the future, when we're going to, after 120 years and beyond, when a person is going to go up to Shammai, he's going to go up over there, and he, they're going to say, okay, what did you do? What didn't you do? You know, we know the whole story. We heard all the stories. They go up there. He's a tunnel. There is light. He sees the, the baby. The he saw the light. <laughs> he goes to the end of the tunnel, and then they're going to ask him what he did. So if I don't know that's not the way it's going to work. He says, to an Amaharit, they're going to ask him, did you learn Torah? Did you this? Did you that? A person is a Tariq Hacham, they're going to open up the Shulchan Aruch. They're going to open up the Shulchan Aruch and then they're going to ask him, let's start with the first halakha. What's the first halakha in the Shulchan Aruch? Yidgaber ka'ari. You have to wake up like a lion. La'amod babokir. To wake up in the morning. La'avodat borot. To the service of his creator, of his master. Shiyehu me'orer tashachar. What's the first halakha in the Shulchan Aruch? Wake up before dawn to serve Hashem. When they're going to open up this halakha for us after 120 years, could we all say that we fulfill this? <laughs> that we woke up the shakha means the Hashem, the Shubhav Yosef Karo is saying, the Baal Shulchan Aruch is saying, not only we have to wake up to serve Hashem, it's not enough to pray shakari. You have to be so excited to pray shakari. You have to feel the shakari inside of you. You have to be me'orer the shakha. You have to wake up the shakha. You have to wake up the night. You have to wake up the morning. That's kind of thing the morning wakes you up. That's a problem that we have, right? Oh, this is, it's sunny today, I'm in a good mood. What do you mean it's sunny today, I'm in a good mood? You have to make the, you have to make the sun. You have to, you have to make the mood. You're in the, a person that allows the weather to change his, his mood, his what does that mean? What? He, he allows the weather, the weather. If it's a sunny day, he has shalom by it. If it's a dark day outside, everything is, uh, it's a problem. What is this? A person has to make himself. You have to be the son. You have to turn into that. We don't need any comments today, Abu John. No, he has to make a amana. means small emuna. Small emuna, that's what it means. Now look what the Ramah adds to what the Shulchan Aruch says. So first of all, that's going to be the first fallen thing in Shammai. We're going to go over there, they're going to say, did you, did you fill, fulfill the first halakha in the Shulchan Aruch? What are we going to say? No. Will we have a face to say, yes, we fulfilled it? You know, some tzaddikim, they used to pray by purpose late. They used to wake up until they used to get ready, this. First, they have to learn four or five hours of Gemara. Those were the big chassidim. Well, we're not big chassidim. We start with the first halakha of the Shulchan Aruch. Now, look what the Shulchan Aruch says next. And this is what I think is a bigger chidush. This is a big problem in our days. You know, I was in Tom's River over Shabbat. Chassidish a place. So some woman came over to the house. And they were talking about this uh, very filthy show that came out. I'm only mentioning this because it's it, it, by 
by the Jewish people, they're watching this thing, and it's become a very big, disgusting thing. It's become a, like a black stain on us. That's a show. It's called unorthodox. Elia, you okay? I'm going to put the rent through my mind. All right. <laughs> it's called unorthodox. What is this show about? Some lady, she uh, maybe she was in an abusive house. Maybe she saw the bad side of Judaism. I don't know if there is a bad side. She became what we call in Bukharin Ahlot. No, Ahlot means the biggest filth. And she's just her vendetta, her goal is to, and she's a very rich person. She's a very rich person. She married a goy. The goy left her. He left her. And she's making a show about her life, how evil, how abusive, how horrendous religious Judaism is. How, how, how horrendous Orthodox Judaism is. And what I'm about to tell you, or I have to read from the Shulchan Aruch, you know, all these people that are doing this, they're not the first ones. Many, many Jews, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sad to say this, after the Holocaust, there were two types of Jews. One of them became super religious, like Rabbi Lau, who became chief rabbi of Israel. He survived Bushenwald at the age of four, four or five years old. He survived one of the worst concentration camps. In Auschwitz, there was another survivor. It came from a religious family, Eli Weisel, Nobel Prize winner. Every kid in high school knows his books. They make, they make them read his books night, the, the trilogy, night, day, and uh, I don't know, dawn, dawn, night, day, trilogy. So once the, um, Rob Eli Weisel, Eli Weisel went, came to the Lawich area. You know, he was a good Jew, but he became an atheist after the Holocaust. It was hard. Today, the defense minister of Israel, Yair Lapid, who's becoming the next prime minister, wow. if he gets his way, his father, Tommy Lapid, he was the first atheist in the Israeli Knesset. He also, he also survived Auschwitz and he became an atheist lot in. So once Eli Weisel, but Tommy Lapid who had a vendetta against Judaism. He introduced pork into Israel. He uh, did a lot of things against the religion. Eli Weisel, on the other hand, he wasn't against the religion, but he just, he asked himself in his book, Night, he said, the day my father died is the day my God died. Uh, That's what he writes. If you guys don't remember that, uh, say, the day my father died, my God died. So he once came to the Lubavitch Rebbe. He respected Chachamim, Rabbanim. He came to the Lubavitch Rebbe and he asked the Lubavitch Rebbe. He said, he said, Rabbi, your grand rabbi, Admor is grand rabbi. He said, how do you believe in God after the Holocaust? after the horrors. He said, the Torah says, look how smart he was, Re'e, see. See the blessing and the curse. I saw only curses. I saw curses. I saw Jews, you know, there were Jews, the kapo, that they were given the power to be like the police officers. You know how they had in Egypt, the police officers? But those police officers in Egypt became the skenim. They refused to hit their, to beat the, their brethren. These kapo, not so much. Maybe there were stories that they did. They didn't, but... So, he said, how do you, how do you believe in God? How did you, how could you believe in God after the Holocaust? And the Lababa Cherebbe looks at, El, at Eli Weizel and he tells him, who do you want me to believe in, man? And that one sentence has the answer to everything. Because if you don't believe in Hashem, that it was Hashem who made the ovens and brought the Jews to that state, that Hashem allowed all that, and not only Hashem allowed it, He was in it. He was there with them. He was there with them. If you don't believe it was Hashem who did it, that means who do you think did it? Was it Hitler? Was it a Nazi? So, so Nazi, you tell me Nazis have the power? They're, they're the ones in control? So you tell me they're the ones in control? So if God is not in control, you tell me the Nazis are? <coughs> So I should believe in them. And what Kadosh Baruch Hu did, the Lubavitch Rebbe used to say this, the greatest country in the world, scientific, mathematic, the most intelligent people, they're the ones that became the biggest killers. Animalistic. When they used to see a dog, they used to pet it, cuddle it, love it. They were having pictures, pictures. Nazis used to document everything, it was a blessing. So we could say to all those uh, Holocaust deniers, we have documents of them. In the back of the Auschwitz, they had a summer camp. So while people were burning and the ashes were spreading in the air, the Germans used to have a summer camp. 
and you see them eating blueberries, the strawberries, this, that, while Jews are burning in the, in the oven over there. That's the klala in lotishmoa. If you're not going to listen to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that's what level you're going to get to at the end. Im lotishmoa with Hashem. And every generation we had a Holocaust. Every hundred or so years, the Jews went through something. Every hundred or 150 years, but we're due for another one. Yeah. If we're not going to listen to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, maybe this whole coronavirus is a chesed of Hashem that is taking away the dinim that we're supposed to get in our bodies that He's giving us this coronavirus. Yesterday I was at a uh, upsharing, the three-year-old thing. So we're at the table, and uh, so there was a nurse over there sitting. This that I came late. I was demoted to the to the kids' table. Let's call it. So I was sitting over there, and uh, so there was a nurse there sitting over this that. And uh, so the uh, conversation came about vaccine shots, mm -hmm. vaccine vaccinations. <laughs> so I said, uh, Yeah, I got the vaccine shot. I got it. Both. So yeah, because don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going to grow horns or a tail yet. <laughs> it just it tells me, oh, you're not going to die yet. I said, what? <laughs> the, the wishing, the pain, such a brainwash. That's klala, by the way. That's the red that you're seeing klala, that brainwashing of people. There's a Illuminati out to get you and to destroy the world, and they're out to get you. Like, they need a vaccine to kill the world. Seriously, right? Like they couldn't do it any other way but to make a whole coronavirus out of it, yeah? That's the that's the best thing they could come up with. Some lady was sitting there, she's like, why would they need a vaccine to kill people? Just put it in the air, pollute the air and you're done. Why do you gotta kill them with a the vaccine with a shot? Control! That's klala, by the way, that, that brainwashing of people. People are on their phones eight hours a day watching this news. Watching and their brain, it's klala, right? It's the klala. What's the chayim? What's the Chaim? The Chaim is the Torah in Shamuat Ishma. Instead of wasting your time on politics and this and nonsense, look at the Torah. Come to Shior Torah, not once a week, not twice a week, every day. I, saw, I was speaking to a guy, a young guy. The kid's aspiration in life is to be rich. So he says, he thinks I'm a Baba. I said, I'm not a Baba Sali. No, you are, you are. He's convincing me that I'm the Baba Sali. I said, I'm not the Baba Sali. Don't just stop convincing me. He says, yeah, yeah. Bless me to be rich. Kids 18, 20 years old. The kids want to be rich. I said, Hi, may you be rich. Give me a sigula. I said, I'll give you a real sigula. For real. I said, yeah, for real. For real. For real. Learn three hours of Torah a day. Yeah, that's three hours? Yeah, three hours. Once in the morning after Shacharit. Before Mincha, learn an hour. And at night, when you're done, learn for an hour. I can't. It's too much. Could we cut that in half? I said, trust me, if I cut it in three, you're not going to still do it. You want bracha? Shamua tishma. It's in the Torah. Like one guy was telling me, he was mechalel Shabbat, but parhesia. His business was open. He had a barber business open on Shabbat. Out of all the things, he said, I want to be chazan for the Amud. I said, listen, we're not so machped if mechalel Shabbos to go up to the Torah. Is that but for the Amud? You have to understand that all your brachot, you can't, you cannot represent people that if you're not keeping the mitzvot yourself, how are you going to represent them? If you're mechalel Shabbos, no, I want to be chazan. I said, but you're not doing nachatrua. You're, you're doing against. I said, let's make a deal, I told him. Because I'm not against you going to be a cousin. I'm not against. Why don't you do a me a favor? Me and you make a deal right now in front of everybody. Say you're going to keep Shabbat. No, I can't. But you believe to be a cousin for the Lulu Shema. This is you believe it. But the saddest thing is, you know what's the real Kalala? I see it in this generation. And this generation is a great generation. We go up with a lot of things. Internet, uh, Pritsu, this, that. One thing I see in this generation why I don't like when young kids walk outside with Ariyama. It gets to me so bad. It breaks me. Yeshiva boys, they're walking outside, they're at a yeshiva, good yeshiva, the kippah goes off their head. Why? What's wrong with the tree that you have a kippah? The priest walks outside with his red yeah, clown yeah. hat and you can't walk outside with a kippah? Okay, put a kazait on your head. Put an <laughs> olive on your head. Put something. Why you? No, people are going to look at me differently. That's the biggest shameful thing to say. This kind of thinking causes these kind of shows called unorthodox. This is what, this kind of thinking. I'm ashamed. And this lady comes outside, this miluklek, and she goes up and she says, she says, the, the shorter the skirt I wear and the lower cut the blouse is, the more free I feel. So go outside naked. Why even have to wear something? The lower it is. She came from a Hasidic family. Apparently they abused her over there. 
Because of the abuse inside, what did the Torah say? Rabbi Victor Miller used to say, not Rabbi, not Rabbi Victor Miller, Rabbi Volbe used to say this. It says, Sheva yipol tzadik vekam. Seven times the tzadik falls and gets up. So we all think what? Seven times the tzadik makes averot. Then he gets up. He's not mityash, right? He doesn't give up. We're reading it wrong. Sheva yipol tzadik vekam means because of his mistakes he grows from them. Because of his past. Because he fell, he got up. Not he got up because he fell. Because he did the Avera, that's what made him into a tzaddik. He learned from his, from his past. He learned that he, what he went through. Look what the Ramah says in the first Siman of the Shulchan Aruch. Every time I read this Siman, it's so hard for me to get to the next one because the first halacha, wake up the morning. We don't keep it. Look what the Ramah says. It's such a, it's such a Ramah for our generation. The Ramah was a Moshe Israelish. Some say he passed away at the age of 33. Oh, wow. He passed away on Lagba Omer, on Lagba Omer. And on his, and on his, and on his uh, eulogy, in his Hesped, he said 33 things about him. Mm. The Ramah, at the same time the Shulchan Aruch was writing his magnum opus, the Code of Jewish Law, it took him 10 years to finish this, <laughs> the books. And uh, uh, there were three rabbis that generation called Yosef. Three rabbis. Yosef is a very special name if it's used correctly. One rabbi was called Rabbi Yosef Taitachak. He was Greek, Greek rabbi. He never slept for seven years. He used to fall asleep like this. Like this, he used to fall asleep. He was one rabbi. Second one was Rabbi Yosef Barlev, big, big Ashkenazi rabbi. And the third one was Rabbi Yosef Karo. Three rabbis called Yosef. Each one, there was a fight in Shamaim. The Chida brings us down. In Shem Olim. All three of them, not the Rama. These three, the three, Rabbi Yosef Bar Lev, Rabbi Yosef Taitach, and Rabbi Yosef Cairo. There was a fight in Shamaim. Who will be chosen to write the book? When you come out with something, a business, you know, in Shamaim, they, it's a special job. You have a responsibility. At the end, Rabbi Yosef Cairo was chosen. Why was he chosen? Because it was a party. <laughs> Cute. Uh, Rabbi Yosef Taitachak was also considered Sephardi. It's Greek. It's Greek. It's not Ashkenazi. No, it's not about that. He was chosen because he was humble out of all three of them. Because he was the most anah. They didn't look how rich they were. They didn't look how rich he was. They didn't look how how uh, smart he was. They didn't even look at his family. You know, he grew up as an orphan. When he went to yeshiva, they kicked him out. He didn't go out and make a Netflix show after that. They kicked me out of yeshiva. All the rabbis are bad. This, that. People are, you know, people left the derek because of that. I know a guy. He's an atheist still today. He's he's forty five years old. He ri- he still rides a bike. What do you call those? A motorcycle bike. He has hair up to here. He's in a, not an atheist. He's in I think an, anti- an, an agnostic. 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 You know what agnostic is? It's the weirdest thing I heard. They believe in everything. Am I right or wrong? They believe in nothing or they believe in everything? Atheist believes in nothing. It's like they have he and she. They, they, every, he and she. It's a new thing of the 21st century. They believe in it. So I asked them, I asked them, why you left the Derev? He comes, came to shul. I'm telling you, if a religious guy would do this, I think he would get Nebu Ara Ruach HaKodesh. Every day nets to say Kaddish for his father. Every day he was in nets. Yeah, Every day. So, but he, oh. so I said, how did a guy like you, I told him, we had a conversation one day, and they called him, I said, how does a guy like you uh, be a atheist, agnostic, whatever you are, <laughs> but you come to the Kali, you say Kaddish every single day. Said, it bothers you because you're saying, Yid Gadal Vid Kaddash Shmei Rabbah, because what's the problem? I believe in God too, I believe in everyone. So I said, what made you like this? He said, you're not going to eat pork. No, pork is not going to eat. Why? Eat pork chops. It's good, I heard. <laughs> Do everything. What's the problem? No, I'm not. You fast on Yom Kippur. Yeah, I fast. Why? <laughs> Why? He's afraid. Okay. So he tells me one time he was in yeshiva, there was a yeshiva in Forest Hills called OTI back in the day. You guys remember that yeshiva? It used to be in the Beit Gavriel. One of his rebbies over there got so upset with him. He was a chuligan. He was a shobabni. His rebbe got so upset at him, he lost his school and he put him in a chokehold. He messed this guy's brain for so long. 35 years later, he still remembers it. He said, that's why I love Judaism. Ah, no. Not no, the guy he got, he got dropped everything. He got so he got he got, he got, he got, huh? got, hurt, okay. he got so hurt yeah, inside. He got, hurt. he got so hurt and that's a point. He got hurt, that's true. The Rebbe has to find him and say sorry. That's a fact. 
But a person cannot take past life experiences, take it, and because of that, say, I'm doing revenge. Who are you doing revenge against to do? And then they say, you have to take your experiences and grow from them. Shevi Yipol Tzadik I remember I had a Rebbe in, in uh, grade school. When I was a kid growing up, we didn't keep Chalav Yisrael. We didn't keep Chalav Yisrael. We, uh, Entamen, Snickers, Schmicker, today I can't look at these things. Back in the day, back in the day I loved these things. My brother made me be Chalav Yisrael. So one day I was in uh, eighth grade, I had a Rebbe, He's, he was from Chaim Berlin. <coughs> Chaim Berlin is a prestigious yeshiva, Rav Hudner. So I had a <laughs> Rebbe from that yeshiva in eighth grade, and he sees me eating cheese curls. Cheese That's curls is O-U-D, it's not Chalav Yisrael. If good. you would see the embarrassment that Rabbi put me through, I'm in eighth grade. I'm not in 15. I'm not 15 years old. 16. 16 could 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 deal with such a thing with that emotional hurt. Put me in front of that class, and he says, "You're eating O U D. You're not Chav Yisrael. What kind of?" I'm standing there. I'm like, "It's just cheese curls for the love of God." He sent me to the principal's office, and I, and I honestly didn't know what I did. I was eating cheese curls, and I still ate the cheese curls after that. <laughs> Listen, I didn't make a difference. But what? But what? But what? If I would have taken that, these kind of situations get kids off the derech. By the way, it's these kind of situations that kids off the derech. I heard a nice story of David Yosef. You know, of David Yosef, the one, the son of the Rabbi Yosef. Of David Yosef. He once said a story, he was walking down the block with his father in Yerushalayim. You know, they lived in Harnof in Yerushalayim. <laughs> Not so far away from the Kotel Amaravi. 20 minute walk, 30 minute walk. As they were walking one day from the shul, it was Shabbat. You know, in Yerushalayim, in the religious areas, it's dead. On Shabbat, there's no cars, no nothing. If you pass by the Hasidic areas, you're in the, you, will get, you will get stoned. You do need a basin or a Sanhedrin. They will stone your car over there. One day he's walking with his father home from the shul, from the Yerushalayim, from the shul they had. And a uh, Chiloni, a secular Jew, stops by the uh, Rav Ovadia. He didn't know who he was, probably came from some place in the north. He says, so he, he puts down his window and he asks the young David, David Yosef, the son of Rav says, Could you please tell me, which way is this road going to? So he was a very cheeky boy. So he told him, you want to know where it's going? Straight to Gehenom it's going. That's where it's going. And everybody laughed. He sang the story himself. As a young kid, this is what he did. And everyone was laughing. He was a star of the crowd. And Rav Avadi said, he comes home from school. He doesn't walk by himself. He has a whole uh, entourage with him. And everybody starts to laugh. Rav Avadi was the only one not laughing. And he looked at his son and he said, what you did right now is a big Avera. He sang the story himself when he, when he was a kid. He said, what you just did is a big Avera. He said, that guy, whatever chance he had to becoming a religious Jew, you just broke everything. Because unfortunately, see, people don't have that ability to fight their emotions. People do not see, the, they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They see what's now. They prefer to see the klala. They don't prefer to see the bracha. They don't prefer to see the chayim. They don't want to see the chayim. And the Ramah says something crazy. The Ramah, he was writing a Shulchan Aruch at the same time he was writing it, Rabbi Yosef Karo. When he found out that Rabbi Yosef Karo was writing a Shulchan Aruch, he closed his book. He said, I'm not writing it. Not only that, he writes in his introduction to the Shulchan Aruch, whoever argues with Rabbi Yosef Karo is like arguing with the Shekhinah. It's like arguing with a divine person. But he said, I'm just coming to put footnotes. In cases where the Ashkenazi minhag is different than the Sephardic minhag, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. From here, we also learn if a person, if there's some halachot that, let's say, uh, Ashkenazi wants to be machmir and go from glad kosher to Beit Yosef, right? He's allowed to. He's not going against his minhag for doing that because the Ramah already said, whoever argues with Rav Yosef Karo, kecholek ala shechina. He's like arguing with the shechina. Look what he writes on the first. Uh, what could you add to this footnote? Look what he writes over here. I'm just going to tell you one sentence. And this is for our generation. This sentence over here. He says over here, When a person will put to his heart, when he'll think, when he'll contemplate every day for 10 minutes, that the great king, it's one of the mistakes of our generation to keep up thinking of, of Hashem as a father. Father, 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 father. Sometimes you also have to think of Hashem as a king. 
and that's what we say in the Avinu Malkeinu. Avinu, but don't forget, okay. Malkeinu. And a Melech has to do what he has to do sometimes. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and look what he writes, Asher Melo Kol Haaretz Kevodo. If a person doesn't believe, Gabriel, look at me. If he doesn't believe that Hashem is next to you all the time, Dir Balak. It could be a little bit of Kfira. Because if God is omnipotent, then He's perfect and He's everywhere. He knows everything. You know one of the names of God is? Makom. Makom, the place. Why? We are in Him. He's the place. He is not in us. He does not fill us. We're filling Him. He put room for us to live here. That means for God to make us, to make us exist, He had to, what do we say, first sentence of the Otsrot Chaim? Tzimtzu. He had to constrict himself. First rule of a marriage is what? Restriction. Learn to constrict yourself. If you want to make room for somebody in your, in your life, first you have to do is make him space. If you're not going to make him space, where is he, he going to live? On your head? And by the way, they have to get to your head. What does Hashem say in the future? God is going to take the tzaddikim and make them a crown on his head. Not only does God create us, he will make us a crown on his head. You have to see Shehakadosh Baruch Hu Omed Alav. He's always standing and watching you. I'm saying this, I'm getting goosebumps myself because I cannot say that I always think like this. Ve'ro'eh ma'asav. And, one of the, and he sees your actions. And one of the 13 principles, uh, attributes of the principles of faith is what? Not only does he see our actions, he also reads our minds. Mm. An angel, by the way, when a person has bad thoughts in the future, after 120 and beyond, when it's you had a bad thought, it says, Lo taturu acharei levavchem. It's have bad thoughts, right? Lo taturu acharei levavchem, acharei enechem. But an angel can't hear our thoughts. He can't see what we're thinking. Who's going to testify against us? That's how deep the din goes. If a man will hide in the deepest caverns, in the deepest places. You think I don't see you down there? You, see, you think I don't see you because you close the door, close the lights, and then you put on your phone. You think I don't see what you're doing? Miyad, but if, and if you're gonna think like it, this is the Rama talking. Miyad yagi, I love you, Hashem. You're a Jew. You have superpowers. You know what your superpower is? You're connected to God 24/7. If you're gonna spend five times a day, five minutes a day thinking like this, whatever I just said from the Rama, right away you're gonna get your Hashemai. It's a promise from the Rama. It's a promise. Better than this, you want? You want Sigula, right? This is the Sigula of your Hashemai. Think about him. Make room for him. Re'e, see. You don't have to hear. Hearing is for dummies. You could see. That's your superpower. And in the, you know what Bosha is? From the shame, shame of Akadosh Baruch Hu. You know what kind of shame this is? It's the greatest. You know, when you feel, when you feel shame of Hashem, when you feel shame of Hashem, it's like getting high times 100. That's how good it feels. It feels good being shameful of God. Try it one time. One night, sit for a tikkun chatzot. You forget about tikkun chatzot. Sit during the day for five minutes. Sit on the floor. Don't think of Hashem. Think about the base I made this for five minutes. But really think about it. Imagine the destruction. You're going to feel like you were transported back 2,000 years ago. You're going to start crying. And you're going to ask yourself, how is these things coming to me? I wasn't there. I didn't see it. No, you were there. You did see it. You're connected to the infinite force. You are infinity. You know your infinity? You're like a Kadosh Baruch Hu. You're in self. You were created from Him. The Torah, God, and Jews are one. You're infinity and beyond. Now you know why you have to love every single Jew? Because you're loving Hashem, really. You're loving God, really. And look what he says. You're not allowed to be embarrassed that you become more religious. Some people, you become religious, start to laugh at you. Like we say in the Bukharians. Uh, what did they say? Uh, fanatic. He became fanatic. He became. Uh, there's another word. There's a better word. They say. Pisati, 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 fanati. This, that. He became. That's what the Ramah says. Atiyah but Don't be embarrassed. You know, I was in shul by the Ashkenazim, by the Hasidim. I was by this past Shabbos. They have a nice, beautiful shul. 
And uh, with the mikra over there, building the mikra. I was okay to donate to that mikra. Very proud of it. So I was over there, and you know, on the Sunday when I came to Davin, you know, you guys realize that on my talit, I have the 72 letter names of Hashem. So I got a little embarrassed. I said, I'm going to go with this talit. <laughs> in the place full of Fasi, uh, they're going to think it fell from the moon. You understand? I personally didn't ask for this talit. My dad got it for me. But he got it for me. I wear it out of respect. And I remember this Ramah. <laughs> I said, Asura Adamli Dvayash, you cannot be a Mespitana, I went. And I went out with the talit. And then on Sunday it was worse. Why? Everybody there wears one filled in. I wear two at the same time. <laughs> I said, well, but I'm going to go over there with two filled in. They're going to think I'm crazy. Over there. They don't know what this is. They, they may have seen it, but they think it's some kind of... Uh, I, was, I was fighting with myself. I said, wear the two fill in. Don't wear the two fill in. I was fighting. I was embarrassed. It's embarrassed. Imagine, yeah, just what, imagine you go to a place. Everybody's doing one thing. And then suddenly you come over there like a sore thumb right in the middle. You're sitting over there with two fill in. I said, Vobalam the Ramah says, bosh alav. Do not be embarrassed if, if, if they're gonna say it like this. I went over there, I put those tefillin, and afterwards they came up and they said, What is this? I explained it to them, the Minhag of Daria Kadosh. It was a bit of a Kiddush Hashem. You're the whole crowd. <laughs> I don't think they wore two tefillin afterwards, <laughs> but it was a Kiddush Hashem, I believe so. For me, it was a Kiddush Hashem specifically because I kept the mitzvah of the Ramah. But what happens if Chas Shalom, Chas Shalom? Your wife tells you to go to a wedding and everybody over there is tuni luch, tuni luch, and nobody is dressed over there. And you said to your wife over there, I don't want to go. I don't feel so, I don't think in my spiritual level I can go to this wedding. Maybe I'll skip it. No, you're crazy. You're fanatic. <laughs> what do you mean you're fanatic? You're keeping the Torah Kedusha. You're keeping the Torah Kedusha. I don't stay at weddings. I come, I say mazal, I sit for five minutes, maybe one dance, and I go. I for sure don't go to mixed weddings. Are you ashamed you're Jewish or you're not? Are you ashamed? How could you be ashamed that you're Jewish? We're going to a birthday party. Where's the birthday party? Where's the birthday party? Lounge. Lounge? Where's your birthday party? One kid up. We're going to a birthday party. I say, oh, okay, it's good. It's kosher. Birthday party. Go enjoy. To the club. What? <laughs> what, what kind of birthday parties? Underage kids that have hormones can't control their uh, emotions, alcohol. Yeah, just put the yetzahara. What is this? And the worst thing is this. This, al tie bosh mi mal igim. Don't be afraid of the mal igim. How you take off your kippah in public? How could you take off your kippah in public? Why are you ashamed? Re'e. See, what does it mean, see? Let them see how you're not ashamed that you're Jewish. Let them see that you're not ashamed that you're Jewish. Let them see. That's what it means, Re'e. That's for the Ramah over here of Re'e. Now, I want to tell you one Ariya Kadosh. From the parasha. The Pasuk says over here, in the end of the parasha, Re'e. Ki ye becha evyon. This week's parasha, we have a major mitzvah called tzedakah. Mm-hmm. The Torah gives us the mitzvah of tzedakah. Ki ye becha evyon. When you will have an evyon, evyon is a miskin. Person who lost everything. Me'echad achecha. When you have tzedakah to give, first give to your community. Me'echad achecha. It's a bracha, don't worry. Me'echad achecha, it's word. Me'echad she'arecha. In one of your towns, from here is the halakha. When you have to give tzedakah, first give to your community. If you have a poor person here, poor person somewhere else, where do you give first? In your area, you have to give first. In your land, I know it means don't say yesterday there was a campaign. I gave already. Yesterday was a campaign. Today already, you know, it's a new campaign. How many campaigns do they have already? The Chesed Fund, GoFundMe, uh, the, the Kupatair, the Rabbi, the Chicken for Shabbos. How much can I give already? Lo ta'ametz levavcha. Do not, no, it's the ta'ametz. Don't strengthen your heart. Give. Lo tikpotz et yadcha. I know it's lo tikpotz et yadcha. Don't jump your hand. What does that mean, don't jump your hand? Really, a Jew's hand is always out to give. Don't pull it back. 
Your hand is always out to give. Don't pull it back. You're naturally a giver. Don't pull back. What is patoach tiftah? Guys, sit down. Don't worry. We got it. What's patoach tiftah? From here we get a pasuk. Poteach et yadecha. Umazbiya lechol chai ratzon. V'ha'avet ha'vitenu lo machsoro ha'sheh ekhsaro. Hishamer lecha. Beware. Peni yedavayim levalcha biyaal. Where you're going to be um, evil in your heart. Lemor, Karva Shnata Sheva Shnata Shemita, Vera Kicha Barika 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 Yon, Veloti Tenlo, the Kara Lecha Shem. If you're too cheap and you don't want to give the Tzedaka, you feel like he won't pay you back. He's asking you for Tzedaka, the Kara Alecha El Hashem. Sometimes the Anim, they say, This guy is so rich. How come he doesn't give me Tzedaka? How come he couldn't give me something? The Kara Alecha El Hashem, the Haya Becha, Chet. And then you will have it out there. But what do you mean? It's my money. It's not your money. It's not your money. It's HaKadosh Baruch Hu's money. Uh, Victor Miller says a very scary thing. I read this on Shabbat. I let my wife read it. She enjoyed it very much. Where is the Sibur? I want to read you a Pirkei Avot. It's a scary Pirkei Avot in the name of Rabbi Akiva. It's a beautiful Pirkei Avot. You guys are going to enjoy it. It's chapter 3. The Pirkei Avot says something very, very chilly. It says over here, Hakol tzafui, everything is seen. Harishut netuna, and you always have permission to do whatever you want. Ubetov haolam nidon, always Hashem judges the world favorably. Vahakol lefi rova maaseh, but it also depends what's the majority of people's actions. Hu aya omer, who's hu aya omer? Rabbi Akiva is saying this. Hakol natun be'eravon, everything Hashem gives you, He always asks for a guarantee. Chilling sentence from Rabbi Akiva. There's always you have to give God a guarantee because Hashem wants it back. Hachanut patu pitucha. The store is always open. What store? God's store. This store, everything, this world, it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not 7 11, 7 12 24. Hachen vani makif. And you're always buying stuff on credit, remember. Credit card is not an American uh, thing. It's from the Perkei Avot. Everything you buy in this room is with a credit card. Your house is with a credit card. Cash rate is Cash rate, exactly. Your, your money, your business is with a credit card. Your job, credit. Your family is credit card. Everything, you, Hashem wants it back. You have to pay for everything. Whoever thinks this world is for free, he's a juvenile. You ever take a kid to the store? What does a kid do in the store? Give me, give me, give me. You have to explain to him. You have to pay. Hachen vani maki vapinkas patuach. And the uh, credit, the the book, the, it's all oh, the ledger is always open. Hashem is always watching. Who owes me what? The hayat kotevet, and it's, God is always writing down. Today he had a nice lunch. Today he had a good piece of rib steak. It's, it's you gotta pay for that. You know you gotta pay him for that. The call harotzel lilvot. Now let's say you don't want to take on credit. You want to borrow. You want to take extra. You're having a party tonight. You have a wedding tonight. It's not enough a regular wedding. You have to go full force. Five hundred dollars a chair. Let's say you're taking a big don a big uh, uh, loan from Hashem. The hagabai magzirin tadir bechol yom. And every day Hashem asks for payment. Did you pay me for yesterday? Are you paying me for today? I just want to know. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is very exact with everything. And when God asks for you back, sometimes He doesn't even ask you. He sees you have it, He takes it back. How are we allowed to enjoy from this world? Well, Victor Miller says, you have a house. What are you using in this house? See, are you using it for the bracha or the chayim? The Gemara asks, how are we allowed to enjoy from this world? Everything is His. You know what the Gemara says? Kan lifne bracha, kan lachar bracha. You know what's Hashem's payment? A bracha. A blessing. You know what a bracha means? You know what the word baruch means? I always wonder, what's this word baruch? What does the word baruch mean? A blessing? That's Latin. It doesn't mean blessing. The source of all blessings. The source of all. That's mekor ha berach, what you're saying. Yeah, brecha, brecha, no. What's a brecha? Pool. What's a pool? What's a berry? 
you're close. What's this part called? The bend. Ah. A knee. You know what the baruch means? The one that our knees are always bent to. When is what? The one that our knees are always bent to. That's bar that? that's a ba that's baruch. It doesn't mean blessing. That's a Latin word. It's a Latin translation. Baruch means the one who are always bent to. You know what's Hashem's payment? A bracha. Not this. Like Rabbi Schaefer says, the Jews have a disease. Every time they do something, like their mouths are always mumbling. Like, what are they? So is it a disease or something? One Goy was once looking at a Jew. Like, what are they always mumbling over there? Say, Baruch, Hata, Hashem, Elokeinu, Melech, Aolam. Shako, inside this water was Nishamot. You took him out or you didn't take him out? You left him over there. He's inside of you. What's going on over there? Hachenvani patu, adachanut patu, the store is open. You can take whatever you want. But you gotta pay for it. Hashem, you got a beautiful table in your house? $500 in a house? The guy bought a $1,000 table, real wood. I took my book, I put it on the table like this. Be careful, it's uh, real wood, lumber. Lumber is expensive now, be careful. I said, oh, okay, okay, I'm gonna go to the kitchen, be careful. Real marble, it's real, don't touch it. Okay, what did you buy, it's a museum or it's a house? What did you buy it for? It's a museum or a house? Well, Victor Miller says, Hashem gave you a house, are you using it for guests? Are you bringing guests to your house? Hashem gave you a big house, you're using it to, uh, you, Hashem gave you money, you're writing checks to people? Hashem gave you, the Chenvani uh, Makif, the Chenvani wants his money back. The, the store owner, he wants his stuff back. And when we go back, you know what Hashem is gonna ask us? You know what all those questions that he asks us? And the bottom line, the question is one question. Did you pay me, are you ready to pay me back? <coughs> And if you use his things and you get it dirty, then you gotta go to for a dry clean. It happens to be the dry cleaner is called Geeno. Happens to be that's the name. That happens to be that's the name. It doesn't mean some things when you wash them, it doesn't come off. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Person was with a goya, for example. What how he cannot take it, it doesn't go to the washing machine. Oh, yeah. He's gotta go to Kafakela. Imagine you go up to Shamaim, instead of going up yourself, suddenly you have a little chihuahua running after you. Hashem is like, I didn't ask for the chihuahua, you gotta put that back down over there. And the Torah says, He's like, you gotta, you gotta cut, the, cut the chains. You gotta cut the chains. HaKadosh Baruch says, I gave you a body, I gave you ta'ava, I gave you this. You know why Hashem gave us the biggest desire to receive? Because He's the infinite giver. To get from the infinite giver, you have to have an infinite desire to receive. You have an infinite desire to receive. Hashem Baruch Hu gave you a house, use it for Torah. Hashem gave you money, use it for tzedakah. Don't strengthen your eyes. Hashem gave you legs. You know, this was always a very big uh, thing we say. You know the big uh, Yom Kippur is coming up, guys. In a month, in uh, two weeks. One of the Anas we say, on legs that went really quick to run for Averot. When a person goes to do an avera, if he's already going, don't run. Walk slowly. You don't have to run for the avera. And I always say to myself, when I say Anna, look how Hashem Midbarach checks everything. Hashem gave you legs. What are you using it for? Hashem gave you a head, put a kippa on. Hashem gave you a body, put tzitzit on. It's my body. Like I was sitting yesterday in the up train, the, the, the girl over there was like, my body, my rules. Mm. Hashem says, my body, my rules. It's my body. It's my rules. She didn't hear this. Oh, wrong direction. Wrong direction. It's, it's a wrong direction. Exactly. We have to understand we're all here on borrowed time. We are leasing the body. We are leasing the body. A person can't come with a knife and cut his hands and say, it's my body, my rules. you got to pay for that too. It's a halakha, by the way. It's not musar, I'm telling you now. Allah, you can't hurt yourself. You hurt yourself, it's not there. Because it's not your body, you're borrowing it. Remember, when a person passes away, when he wakes up in Tchetemitim, you're waking up with all your defects. Wow. Man. So don't ruin it. Keep it in good shape. Keep it good. Now I'll tell you Kavanah Tzedakah. The Ari Kador says in Parashat Re'en Shara Mitzvah, the small Kavanah, I'll teach it to you guys. When a person gives Tzedakah, there's a Kavanah. The Balatanya says there is no Mitzvah in this world that's more fulfilling than Tzedakah. <laughs> Every mitzvah you do in this world, every mitzvah, either you do with your hand, with your legs, with your mouth, with your heart, 
There's one mitzvah you could do with your whole body. And I'm not talking about tefillah when you're shuttling back and forth. Believing in Hashem is in your mind. That's the mitzvah of tzedakah. Why? When a person works, he's exerting all of his force. And that force becomes money. money. So the Ari says like this. First of all, hanoten tzedakah. One who gives tzedakah. Look at the promise of the Ari HaKadosh. Gam im yireh be'enav shu mefazer ma'mono. If a person thinks that when he's giving tzedakah, he's wasting his money, ain't no. It's not true. He's lying to himself. You're always doubling your money. Never in a life a person became poor by giving tzedakah. Never. You only gave. And says the Ari, This is the kavana. Why does the word tzedakah have the letters tzadik, dalet, kuf, and a hey? The sphira of the malchut, the shkina hakadosh, God's divine presence, is represented by the word righteousness. Righteousness is not tzaddik. That's somebody who is righteous. Righteousness is tzaddik. Melech ohev tzedakah umishpat. Our job, says the Ariya Kadosh, is take this word tzaddik. Because righteousness, a person who is righteous, what is he? He's very, he's full of what? Deen. He's full of judgment, right? Everything has to be by the books. To meet in the judgment, we have to put the tzaddik in the picture. The tzaddik. So we have the tzaddik and you have the tzaddik. Tzaddik and tzaddik. Who's the tzaddik? The tzaddik is the man. Is the zahar. Is the, it's the Sfira of Yesod. The Yosef Ha Tzedek. To give, just like a man gives a woman his zera and then she has a baby, so too the Yesod has to give the Tzedek, the Tzedek has to give the Tzedek the zera. What is the zera of the Tzedek? The letter Yud. If I take the Yud out of Tzedek, what do I get also? Tzedek. So what does he have extra than the tzedek, than the malavud? Here's a yud. If I take this yud of the tzaddik and I cut it in half, yud is how much? Ten. And I cut it in half, what do I have left? Five. A hey. The zahar, the yesod, takes five out of his ten and he gives it to the malchut. And he turns her into what? Tzedakah. And the same time, what does he become too? Tzedakah. That's why the Navi says, he's yelling, the Navi, Yeshaya. Tzion b'mishpat tipadeh v'shaveha b'tzedakah. When you give tzedakah, the smallest kavana, I'm taking the tzaddik, the yud and the tzaddik, and I'm donating five to the tzaddik, and I'm turning her into a tzedakah. That's one kavana. Second kavana. When you're giving money, to tzedak, you have to have kavana to complete the letters of Hashem's name, Yud K, Vav K. How? The Ari says the tzedakah itself is the letter Yud. As we just saw, the tzaddik gives the, the Yud to the, is the letter Yud. Your five fingers is a hey. Your hand is the letter Vav. It's a letter Vav. This is a Vav. It's a Vav. We have already Yud, K, Vav. And the poor man's hand is another five. Hey, yud, k, vav, k. When you're giving him the money, you're completing Hashem's name. Now I'm going to tell you a third kavanah, an even stronger kavanah. Mashiach, says the Ari Kadosh, won't come after the sin of Adam Arishon is fixed. There is one other sin that was worse. The murder of Hevel, when Cain, the first murderer, killed his brother. When a person gives tzedakah, says Dari, da, no. And I'm just telling you two sentences out of the whole thing, what I feel like you guys comprehend at this thing. Ki hakuf shel tzedakah, the letter kuf of the, of the word tzedakah, hi bichinat kain, it's the soul of kain. Shenit pashta, mi zohamat hanachash, hei shel tzedakah. What happened was, kain, 
was really not the letter kuf. It was really the letter hey, hey. What happened when he made the sin of killing his brother? The leg, the leg of the hay, it extended longer and it turned into a kuf. a kuf. Our job is to return that kuf into a hay. That's why what comes after the kuf in the tzedakah? Hey. A hay. So when you're giving tzedakah, you have to have kavanah to fix the soul of Kain. And to make him into good friends, to make ahabat achim with hevel. That's why the letter hey also starts with hevel. And like this, shalom. bless all of you with bracha, Amen. to the sponsor. May Hashem bless all of you with all the Amen. Amen.